Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition, it's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie, brought to us by Bandai. Based, of course, on the Power Rangers movie with Ivan Ooze that we'll be battling throughout this game, it actually only takes part partially in the movie. There's actually a few levels that are flashbacks to episodes from the show. So here we go with Power Rangers the movie for the Sega Genesis. As we begin the game, we get our open copyright screen and then a scrolling storyline before we get to the main menu. Once at the main menu, I'm going to pop on down to options. There's some difficulty settings. I'm going to change it over to the hard difficulty setting and then begin the game. We then have another cutscene before we take control of the ranger select screen and select our ranger. You can select from one of six rangers at any point during the game, though three of the rangers change up between the original yellow, red, and black rangers and the second ones that uh, replace them after the episode of the power transfer. For the first level, I'm going to go ahead and pick the white ranger, one of my favorites and one of many people's favorites out there. I always thought it was just a really, really cool design. Plus, I like the white tiger zord. The game is relatively simple as far as a beat-em-up is concerned. You're able to grab and throw enemies like you were in the SNES one, do a punch combo. You also have a special move that you can pull off at any time, but it costs you a little bit of your health, so it's really only useful for kind of like if you're in a jam, a pinch, and you need to quickly hit it to get enemies to get away from you. One of the only issues I have with this game is it does have a lack of enemy variety you fight an absolute ton of the same enemies over and over again. Randomly, enemies will drop dino coins for you to pick up. A few are worth just extra points to your score, while other ones will replenish your health or give you a extra life or credit. You actually have more than one health meter. It actually depletes down to different colors instead of just the one, which is an interesting aspect. If you can get multiple ooze men together, like right here, it's a good time to use that special move. I wish it did a little bit more damage considering, but it still allows me to kind of get back to my feet and then get another combo onto those ooze men. The one thing I absolutely hate hate in this game is the time limit. Now this mostly is because the hard mode is a lot more enemies that you're dealing with so it runs out a lot more, but when the timer does deplete you start to lose health slowly and it's something that's probably going to happen to you a bunch on the hard mode just because there's so many oozmen and it's hard to destroy them all before that time limit runs down a lot of times. Over here to the right we get a cutscene before the end of stage number one.
After a little bit of a lengthy cutscene, we then get back control of the player select screen, and I'm going to go over to the right and pick the pink ranger for level number two here. Here you have some cars that will come at you in the street. They can hit the enemy, though it doesn't do a whole lot to them. If you hit double right or double left, you can do a run move, so it can help you speed up a little bit, but not a whole lot. You'll run into a dead end and have to deal with Usman soon enough. I remember when this movie came out, how much hype there was behind it, all the stuff at McDonald's, I was going and getting that, and... I ended up seeing it twice, I think, in theaters. Once with uh, a parent, and then I ended up seeing it again with friends. I never saw the later ones. That was kind of like the end of my going with Power Rangers, was the big feature film release. I was really hyped for it, that came out, and then it wasn't too long after that I started to get out of it and get into something else. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of strategy to really do with the Oozmen. It's mainly chasing them down, wait for them to get up, and go for the combo more so than going for the throw, if possible, just because your combo is going to end up doing more damage. Sometimes just waiting for them to come up is annoying, gotta get them in that right spot, and if you do it right, you can get a few of them at the same time right there. I remember being a little disappointed when they ended up changing up a few of the rangers. Especially with the red ranger leaving, it was kind of weird that the leader was going to end up changing up. Was that something as a kid that bothered you as well, them changing the characters, or did you actually like the change of the characters? Not a whole lot going on other than just keep moving down this street slowly, taking out each set of Oozmen as they appear. Try to conserve your health because it is a lengthy level and an absolute ton of enemies. A lot of times they just kind of run towards you and you're forced to just throw them just because that's what ends up happening. And thankfully, at least, when you throw them, they get away and the next set can be taken out before the, uh, the one runs back. They do have the annoying grab move that if you're, like, right in front of them, before you pull off one of your moves, they can end up grabbing you, so you have to be careful of that. If you're not on the same plane as them, not the same, like, line, you won't be able to be grabbed by it, but... A lot of times, they're sporadic in their movements, so it's hard to track them down exactly. You can see that the timer was getting low on that last segment, and don't worry, it'll run out quite a few times before this game's done. One of the things about the whole kind of transferring of characters and why the power transfer even ended up happening was because the actors were actually complaining about pay, and that's why the switch ended up occurring. Apparently, they were being paid well, well below what they should have been being paid. And of course, instead of giving them the money they deserve, they instead get rid of them and change the actors. It's something you see in shows, commonplace, it happens from time to time, but usually it doesn't end up with good results. And I don't really think Power Rangers was quite the same after that. The fame in general, like I said, I started to lose interest, and I think many like, the mainstream popularity of it all started to fade as well.
Thankfully, we're almost nearing the end of this level. It's taking quite a while, but we are finally getting close to the end. But we have uh, just a few more sets of Oozman to deal with. As my time runs out, you'll see that the health bar will slowly start to go down every few moments. It doesn't go down a lot, so you have time to work with, uh, but it is an annoying feature. This game is actually a lot of fun to player and can really help you out as far as dealing with a lot of these enemies. Playing it as a single player game, it gets a little bit repetitive before too long as you can probably already see that. Finally, we defeat the last Oozman in this level, and we're moving on to the next segment. Now, for the next boss encounter, we either get to be the Ninja Megazord or the Falcon Zord. I'm going to choose the Falcon Zord just because it's fun to play as, even though it's not the greatest to control. You can play these stages two-player as well, which is cool. It's kind of like King of the Monsters. We have electricity that we can fire out, as well as getting close and grabbing the enemy and throwing them in the air. A lot of times if you do your attacks, you can negate some of theirs. Don't be on the exact same plane sometimes as soon as they come back. Be a little bit away from them, and that way they have to kind of come to you, and you can get them in a nice little combo. Now, the boss uh, has, like, the same kind of health bar as you do, so you have to drain it down quite a bit. Doing your one special move, you can negate his one charge, which is very useful, and it doesn't end up costing you much. The hardest thing sometimes is actually defeating them just within the time limit. And that goes for all these kind of fights. After a while, the Hornetron will leave. You have then the Scorpatron, the wonderful giant uh, mechanical beast that we saw in the uh, film. Scorpatron, I just like to get into my combos, get stay close. He'll move back and forth a little bit, and when he does kind of come back towards you, a lot of times you can get into a grab or right into one of your combos. Unfortunately, you can't like hit him as soon as he ends up standing back up, or else you can get him right back into a combo. Even off screen, you can end up landing attacks, and that's how we end up pretty much finishing off this fight. And now we're moving on to the next level. Now, stage three is when we go into the flashback episodes. So we get the original yellow, black, and red rangers to pick from. And I'm going to pick Zack the Black Ranger for this stage. 
Thankfully, the enemies change up. We don't have the Oozmen, we now have Putty Patrol members to deal with. They're a little bit different than those Oozmen, technically a little bit harder, even though they would be easier, but since we face them later, you get it. Either way, a nice, quick combo is good enough to deal with them, mostly. We start off on this little section. This is one by one. They will slowly come toward you. Eventually, they'll start coming at you at the two and three at a time, just like we were dealing with the Oozmen. This level is based off the episode White Light, where we saw the uh, White Ranger. The enemy there was the Scarlet Sentinel that had uh, three versions, three forms that we have to deal with. You'll have to fight them during the course of the level before eventually facing off with all of them. As they move back and forth, I try to meet up with them and try to get a nice little combo. You can pick up this barrel and use it as a nice little weapon to deal with some putties and take them out pretty easily. If you get them together, you can hit a few at a time, which is always very useful and fun. They come at you pretty fast and furious here, but they don't have a whole lot of health. Eventually, though, the barrel will go away. But there is more. Here, I'm just going to take this barrel with me for fun and launch it at these putties right away just to hit all three of them at the same time. After this group of putty patrols, we'll have another one of the sentinels to deal with. This time, it's the ear. If they start running, dashing towards you, quickly kind of go through them from wherever they're dashing, and that way you can get through their attack. And that also gives you a nice opportunity to go into a combo right after that. After dealing with that, though, you go right into the next one of the Scarlet Fights. This time the Ring, along with a bunch of Putty Patrol members at the same time, but it's pretty much more of the same that we've dealt with at this point. All you can really do is try to keep the putties away from you when you're dealing with one so that you don't end up getting hit with a quick jump kick from one of them or a sliding punch. But thankfully, you usually can get them before they'll be able to deal too much damage to you. Here we battle all three now of the Scarlet Sentinels. You can get them bunched up to use one of your special moves or you can just kind of get away from them and wait for them to kind of come to you and get them into a combo that way. Doesn't matter which one you focus on, just keep beating them up until they're all taken care of. Like before, if you see them dashing towards you, you can either go through them and then attack them or step aside and then come right back down in order to go into a combo. Either way is efficient for dodging their moves. The ring does fire out fireballs, which can be a little bit annoying. You can dodge them a little, but sometimes they just end up hitting you if he fires them out too close to where you're standing. Once it's taken care of, though, we now go to a Megazord battle. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and pick the Thunder Megazord.
For this fight, we face off against the Scarlet Sentinels once again. I'm going to stand near whichever one I prefer. At this point, the ring is usually annoying with the fire and start my combo right away. The other ones will probably come right at you as soon as you end up hitting that combo on the one, so then you can get right into a combo on the next one. If you get knocked down, I recommend standing up with your special moves so you get that sword swipe and at least you can get them away from you. If you're a little close in doing your punch combo, you can actually avoid the hair swipe of the one, which is interesting. Once one's taken care of, the fight gets a lot easier. Just wait for them to kind of come to you and finish them off, and we're moving on to the next stage. The next level is the Ninja Encounter based off the Ninja Encounter episodes. I'm going to pick Billy for this level. We start off in this cave, or the whole level is in this cave system, and as we begin, we have to destroy one of these rocks to get behind it. However, if you keep going down the level and go to a farther rock and destroy it, you go to a secret battle against Lord Zed. You have this giant Lord Zed, and you have to punch his hand to deal with him. He does this fire move that's very easy to dodge, just be on the other side of it as you're attacking. You can see when he's about to do it. So it's an easy fight, but a fun little easter egg thing that you may not necessarily see if you destroy open that first cave and go through there then. When you defeat Lord Zed, you go to the next area, which is where you're supposed to go anyway. Nothing else happens, it's just kind of there. I guess that was included as, like I said, pretty much an easter egg. Now we go into our regular battling of putties in this cave. Billy's combo is pretty useful, especially sticking out the trident to hit a distance away. This segment right here, there's a lot of putties, you gotta get it through them quickly, so it's potentially one of those ones where the time limit could end up running out on you. We're thankfully nearing the end of the putties here as they're coming at us. Just a few more sets before we get into a boss encounter against Goldar. After this final set, Goldar descends from the ceiling area here and now we get to battle him. You can start immediately with a throw as soon as he lands. He'll fly around a bit try to just wait for him to land and then get in close and go into a combo if possible. There's a rock that you can pick up during this battle if you haven't used it already for the putties and it's uh, efficient to at least hit him a little bit. Be careful when he does end up getting back up when you knock him down. He a lot of times will fly into the air and go for a projectile barrage against you. Other times he'll just fly back onto the screen. And in that case, you can go right into another combo. It sometimes is just difficult to hit him because he's in the air and you end up not being able to do much to him. But when you drain his health mostly down, the fight's over and we go to a second battle against him in the Megazord. For this fight, I'm going to pick one of my favorite Zords of all time, the White Tiger Zord, and use that.
This battle against Goldar is a little bit of a challenge for sure. Goldar will fly down just like before, but we can go right into a combo. Flying all around. If he stays up into the air for a second, get away from the projectile barrage he's about to do. And wait for him to come back down so you can get into a punch of your own. Usually you can't pull off many combos with him just because he's flying constantly and you just knock him out of the air. If he's in the air for too long, you can do your special move in order to swipe the sword and knock him out. Even if it does cost you a little bit of health, sometimes it's worth it. A few times you can get a combo on Goldar, though, it's pretty efficient. When he first gets up, a lot of times it goes for a sword swipe. Usually I just try to get in close and hit him before the sword hits me, or what you can do is dodge the sword or prepare to dodge for the sword and then get in close afterwards to go into your punch combo if possible. Once he gets low on health again, he'll fly away and the battle's over and we're moving on to the next level. The next stage is based off of the episode, The Power Transfer, and for this level, I'm going to go ahead and pick the Yellow Ranger Trini here. We start off immediately with, well, more Goldar. If you haven't had enough of Goldar, he's back again. It's the same deal that we've been dealing with. Watching out for the barrage that he does when he floats into the air. And try to go into a combo when he gets low to the ground, hit him with your special move to knock him out of the air. Whatever you need to do, whatever you've come up with at this point that works against Goldar for you, just keep using it each time you end up battling him. Just like before, it'll take a bit because he flies a lot, but just keep slowly working on that health bar and eventually you'll be able to defeat Goldar here. Just like before, his health will get low and then he ends up leaving. There's a barrage of bombs that get dropped right afterwards as you're dealing with putties. This is really annoying, so try to get rid of the putties as quick as you can. These are falling the entire time we're in this area here, so even as we continue on, we have to watch out for the barrage of these things dropping down. They thankfully don't do a ton of damage. They're much more of a nuisance than anything else. And there's really not a perfect sweet spot to stand. Of course, when you would like the health to drop, you end up getting just more points from these dino coins. It's a tough stage for sure. This is the final one, though, of the Power Rangers on foot levels.
as we get ready to finish up this level, instead of another boss encounter, you have to destroy a statue at the end while still dealing with the uh, things falling from above. Not necessarily an interesting fight, but uh, better than fighting off against Goldar once again. Just try to do your combo staying close to it. You're going to get hit a few times at least. Hopefully you have a little bit of health going into this segment here. Once the statue is destroyed, we get some cutscene and we're moving on to the next level. For this level, I'm going to pick the Ninja Megazord. So here we go with the first fight against the uh, Ivan Ecto machine, and... Watch out for his combo with his attacks, just keep kind of backing away and then getting close when you can to deliver a nice combo of your own. The boss will consistently kind of dive in to do a quick attack with the swords or do a dash forward with their arms to grab you. Just make sure you're stepped away and you should be able to dodge that and potentially go into a combo. If you're far away once he kind of dashes through or once his moves stop, don't risk it, just be prepared to dodge again. That uppercut is fantastic if you're able to dodge it, because as soon as he lands, you're able to go into a nice combo. Now time for the final boss battle of the game. I love dashing here because you end up doing this rotating kick. It's just a lot of fun to do. This fight's similar to the one we just dealt with, just a little bit tougher. Once again, we're just stepping out of the way of a lot of his attacks, making sure we dodge the blades and projectiles and dash forwards with the arms as much as possible and getting close when we can. He'll do that uppercut from time to time, dodge it the best you can, and then when he lands, Hit him with a barrage. As long as you're not on like the same line of sight of him a lot of times, you can dodge most of his attacks. Once we deliver the final hit or get his health down low enough, he ends up going away and we get a cutscene, which is the ending of the game after putting in our initials. It's kind of weird to get the top 10 screen before you end up getting the actual ending to the game. But still, you get that. I'm going to go ahead and put in CRN. And uh, then we'll get to sit back and enjoy the ending, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, on the Sega Genesis.
So there you have it, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie for the Sega Genesis. While it may be a bit monotonous, a little bit repetitive for sure, it's an okay Power Rangers game, one of the better ones, I think, and one that I definitely enjoy going back and replaying. It's definitely one of those games that's more enjoyable with a friend to join you for it, but it's still an okay beat-em-up overall by yourself. Just, I wish there was more variety to enemy types. As the credits wrap up, the game then goes back to the Sega Genesis screen, and you can start the game all over again. But with that, it's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.